Hi, this is John Hayden. This is my first vlog of chapter one of Alan Reed's um, Smartphone Paradox. I believe this chapter is very well written and it is a good first chapter for the book and I'm very interested to see what the rest of the book is all about. And uh, it's a very cool topic, an interesting topic to me. And it's always a question that I've wondered but never really gone into depth about it um, on how the iPhone affects us mentally and physically as human beings in society. Uh, I mean, I've thought about it occasionally here and there, but not as much as depth as this class is taking me. And uh, the summary that I took from this chapter was um, it discusses the positive and negative effects of using our smartphones. And I think this, this summary is what I took out of this well-detailed um, chapter. There's a lot of scenarios and a lot of situations that discuss the positive and negative, the good and the bad on what iPhones do to us mentally and physically. And um, one thing that Alan Reed says in the smartphone paradox is that it is the iPhone is liberating yet controlling, unifying yet polarizing. And that goes the same with positive and negative effects. I mean, we get, we feel, we make ourselves feel good by looking at our phones or by texting someone or by using an app, uh, games or it could be social media it could be anything there's also it can be controlling and polarizing because sometimes maybe that's all we think about maybe that's what we surround our day by as of social media or games or apps or anything that could be controlling to us throughout the day um and one thing that um, Alan Reed says is that it is undeniable that the smartphone has had indeliable effects on the ways we act, think, and feel. That goes the same with um, thinking about social media, thinking about apps, games, whatever that can be distracting us from just regular um, daily activities like sitting in class. I'm sitting in class and I'm trying to pay attention to the teacher and I start dozing off about a video game I download on my phone or if I should text my buddy to see buddy to see how he's doing after class because I haven't talked to him in a while. And that easy access to have entertainment of communication and games slash entertainment, that can distract us. And uh, I think that it can affect the ways we act and can feel. And there's also in conversation that can affect us too. Um, and one thing that... Alan Reed phrases Judson Brewer from the cruising mind or the craving mind by uh, by quoting trigger behavior reward and um, he what he what he what I took from that the trigger behavior reward is I related that to a conversation in a conversation feels you know we're talking face to face if I'm talking to you you're talking to me and let's say uh, you get notification on your phone and you feel it or you hear the notification that's your trigger to react your behavior to pull out your phone and see that these notifications of your phone buzzing or your um the sound going off of iMessage or something like that triggers you to pull out your phone and then your reward is seeing if what kind of notification it is and that trigger behavior reward can affect someone else in that conversation not just you, it could affect, yeah, it could affect somebody else in that conversation. It could, I mean, I know when I'm talking to somebody and they pull out their phone, it kind of shuts me down a little bit because it kind of makes me seem that they're not interested in the um, topic that I'm discussing to them about, but it's actually not. It's just, it's their trigger behavior reward. I mean, I'm guilty of it too. I know my phone goes off. It's just, I, I, I look at it. I mean, it's just become a natural habit or muscle memory for that to happen. And, uh, I believe that can affect us physically or that true behavior reward can affect you, but also others around you too. Not in a major way, but something minor like that. And, uh, well, the other thing that he says is we defend our devices when we perceive our devices do faster communication, when they likely alienate us co 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 -kily, or boost our knowledge when they likely substitute knowledge for information and increase our efficiency efficiency and produ productivity when they likely distract and impede i mean what i took out of this statement or this paragraph is that um we deceive ourselves of what our devices do to us see if it 
we, we see it as a benefit of having our phones all the time with us, even though slightly and deceivedly that it doesn't help us as much as we think. So, I mean, there's a lot of good and there's a lot of bad. I mean, we think that the iPhone's helping us with communication, entertainment, but if you look closely at it, it can hurt us too. Because if we use too much communication, too much um, entertainment, it can distract us from physical daily activities that is also entertainment to us and that we enjoy. But we, we uh, distract ourselves from that physical entertainment and physical communication because we already have that easy access. We could be in our own home and still talk to somebody and, and still play a game or whatever instead of actually physically going out and talking to somebody or going out and going to do something with your friends, going to the mall, the movies, the baseball game or whatever, something that's entertaining. That that iPhone robs us of that and we, as us, as society, we defend that, which, I mean, is a little concerning, but yeah, are these major effects that they're having on us? No, but they're minor effects. I mean, sometimes I think, should, are they going to be major effects? I don't know. I mean, maybe years to come, maybe in a hundred years or maybe in two years, but I don't, we don't know yet. It's a different world nowadays than it was two decades ago. So, but I mean, I'm very interested in this topic that um, Alan Reed discussed in the smartphone paradox. I'm very interested and entertained to the uh, next chapters and excited to learn more.